our viewers and auditors, we welcome you to the show. Today we have an excellent group of people to talk to. And let me take this time to welcome them to the show. Um, thank you for being here and welcome. I have um, to the far right of me uh, is Jeannie Lewis, Miss Sabine French, Mr. David Thomas, Mr. Franz Coutard. Last but surely, we have Patricia Telfort. I welcome you all to the show and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Great. Um, my name is Mialan and I'm the host of the show. Uh, today, we want to talk about different things, but we're going to focus on community work and the help of social media and the media in general and um, how we can use social media, marketing, advertising to empower certain members of our community and how it, we can have a great impact on the community. With that said, I would like to start with uh, Ms. Telford. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I'm currently a I'm currently a social worker in the community, and I mostly focus on working with youth ages 12 through 25. Uh, however, I help a whole range of folks, um, individuals, groups, families, communities. Um, my aim is really to help people in need and have them reach their goals. Well, it is something worthy of a note to say that. Ms. Telford is the daughter of the great Cubano from Stasha. So, um, yeah, she has a famous father who's loved by the Haitian community. So, um, I understand that you graduated with a bachelor's of, uh, uh, actually, a BA in sociology from New York um, University. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I graduated in 2006 and um, really enjoyed my time at NYU. Um, being in the city and having that as part of my experience really helped shape me um, and also propelled me to really want to help those in need. Great. And you went on to Columbia University to uh, acquire a master's in uh, sociology. Correct. No, social work actually, I apologize. Correct. I completed my master's in social work in 2008 and have been working as a social worker since. And you currently own your own business. Correct. And it's um, Peer Action Towards Empowering Self, yes. which you founded in 2011. Correct. Tell us a little bit about the business, how you started it. Sure. Um, so with guidance from family members and also colleagues, uh, I was able to find out how to form a 501c3 nonprofit organization and then proceeded to do so by submitting the forms to... Right. The Department of State started the business and then began doing outreach and ever since each year I try to do more and more to get more clientele and help more people ultimately. Okay, Peer Action, what is that? So basically the goal is to try to use the folks that you know and connect to people who have connections to others in fields that may be of interest in order to reach a certain goal. Mm -hmm. um, if it's higher education, if it's a specific type of job, you know, connecting people through mentorships, through different types of programs that I try to arrange and help people really feel well and happy and achieve their goals. Um, and how does social work help you with this business endeavor? Sure. So social work focuses on a person in his or her environment. And so I learned from my master's program that Whatever environment you're in will certainly affect how you feel and how you function. And so, you know, part of trying to reach a goal is really kind of describing what types of pressures or stressors there might be in the environment that might hinder someone from achieving a goal mm -hmm. and figuring out how to navigate that in order to feel better and move forward and really get to where you want to go. So tell us a little bit about your day. How, how how do you spend your day so, in the office? <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time I'm actually doing outreach. Okay. Um, so I really do take advantage of social media and I love that we've become really uh, in the age of social media where Facebook, Instagram, 
um, and other sort of um, applications are what I use to try and reach other people mm -hmm. and let them know what I'm doing, what's going on in the community, and trying to connect to new people. And um, ultimately, word of mouth, so mm -hmm. people sharing posts that I post or contacting me um, via text or phone helps me to reach other clients and help as many people as possible. So how do you get your business? So basically, um, most of the time I go to community events. Mm -hmm. So I tend to find out about those events through social media. Mm -hmm. I go to the events and network, do outreach, um, and let people know more about me, about my business, about people that I know that can provide assistance, and then take it from there. Great. And how, what, what kind of impact do you, do you think you have on the Haitian community? So, um, actually, the acronym for my organization is PATE. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, most Haitian people that I encounter that see that on the business card kind of make that connection. And so, the sort of main idea when I came up with it was kind of like, Haitians love PATE, and it's kind of like, you know, a way of connecting. And a lot of the events that I do organize tend to have some food aspect. Um, and some cultural aspects. So I definitely highlight um, wonderful um, accomplishments that Haitians have mm -hmm. in many of my posts. Um, and certainly I try to highlight that to other people who may not be aware of how wonderful Haitian culture, history, food, and people are. So I definitely feel that that's important and impactful for our community. And your clientele, do you have a lot of um, patients? I have a, a large, very group of clientele, mm -hmm. um, but many are patients. Yes. Okay, great. And I want to know exactly what your business is, is doing in the community, in the Haitian community. How are you helping our Haitian brothers and sisters? Because, you know, this is a, a Haitian show, sure. and, and we really... Uh, try to help uh, our Haitian community. So I want them to know exactly what you do so that they can seek you know, some, some help from you. So sure. what exactly can you help them with? Sure. So mainly I want to try and help problem solve. Okay. So if there is some system, for example, education systems, the court system, healthcare systems that might be you know, confusing for folks and they need someone to advocate for them or to help explain certain things, I'm someone that I would love them to come to to kind of go over, okay, these are the types of um, benefits you might be able to get or here is someone who can help you reach your goal in terms of, you know, perhaps they are struggling with an immigration status. That's mm -hmm. something I post a lot about mm -hmm. um, in terms of the different um, uh, strides, quote unquote, that have been made with TPS mm -hmm. recently, um, going to all the different forms that have been held by various uh, state agencies, local agencies, to find out, you know, what's really going on, mm -hmm. because people may be afraid because of their status um, to go. Right. So, because I don't have to necessarily worry about that, I don't mind going getting all the information and then having an separate meeting with someone individually to talk about, hey, you know, they made these changes to the deadline for TPS, so now you don't necessarily have to be so worried. And if you need to speak to a lawyer, this is someone you should contact. If you need to speak to <laughs> someone else, you know, um, you know, giving them that sort of um, information so that they feel empowered at the end of the day. So, which means that you have a large network that you work with, you yes. have to know attorneys and all of that. Yes. Um, with the big source of information that comes out on a daily basis, and it seems like you're involved in a lot of different things, mm -hmm. how do you stay up to date? Social media, honestly. Okay. Um, one of the first things I do in the morning is check the various applications to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. I read a lot, um, newspapers, different types of media. I you know, watch television news to find out really what's going on and try to stay as current as possible. And certainly stay in touch with um, older Haitian people to find out you know, what, are, what is going on that may not be 
on the forefront of social media or the news that they would like to share with me so that I can share with people in my generation and younger. Great. I think she has a, a, a great information to share with the community. So just in case uh, our viewers would like to get more information from her, we're going to have her give you her information, how to get in touch with her, her phone number, her uh, location, and of course, her email address and Facebook page so that, you know, for our Haitian brothers who are seeking your help, they can, you know, get in touch with you. Won't you share that information with them? Absolutely. So, um, the best way to probably reach me is the phone number, which is 516-996-2656. And the office is located in Valley Stream. But I mainly am out in the community, so I have no problem with meeting with someone where they are at and where they feel more comfortable. Uh, the email is p-a-t-e-s-w-o-r-k at gmail.com. That's paidswork at gmail.com. Um, on Facebook, we have a page, Peer Action Towards Empowering Self, Inc. And um, certainly, I welcome any questions. Je parle français. You know, um, Thank you so much, Patricia. You are a great gift to our community. Thank you. And best of luck and uh, continued success with your um, endeavor. Thank you, Marilyn. And we are back with some. Um, Swan Scutar, the CEO and founder of Trendcast, Trendcast Digital Advertisement. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Patricia. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, tell me about Trend, Trendcast. Okay. Uh, Trendcast was founded in uh, November of 2018. We are a digital advertising network where we are community based. We are a screen of digital advertising displays that are, that are um, installed in high food traffic areas within the community, whether you're a restaurant, beauty salons, you're a gym. Uh, our main goal is to promote businesses into other businesses and have a screen that also can reflect back on the community and what they are feeling, whether you are seeking information about what company can best uh, serve you in terms of product and services, to job seeking, to news, to weather, to exchange. Uh, our goal is to deliver advertising um, to the community and also as important information as well. So the way it's working is that you have this big screen television yes. inside of a another business mm -hmm. and it's playing back advertisements from other business that they're that you promoted. Yes. Yeah, okay. So when did you start the, the uh, company? Sure. Uh, the company was started in November of last year, 2018. My main objective was to come up with a concept that can empower businesses and also create enough value where small businesses can afford the product. Uh, we have 21 locations within the tri-state area where we have our screens that are installed. And also we are promoting businesses within other businesses in a way that's never been done before, where it's an alliance, where businesses can support each other. And what I love the most about the concept was not only we deliver messages, but we also deliver uh, videos where people can see what you're selling instead of kind of like, uh, you know, asking them to buy. You can demonstrate, you can educate, you can show because sometimes it is hard to understand something without seeing it. So our screen up is able to not just deliver messages, but also show you uh, what the companies are selling. Why did you decide to go into marketing and advertising? Uh, I realize information is uh, freedom. Um, the more information people have, the more access they have in making better decisions. I wanted to create something that gives options to people. And to do that is to create a network where there are so many businesses that can provide good services. Uh, also, I'm Haitian myself. Uh, my product started within the community for one reason. I wanted to show that we do have great business people that have great products and services that we can kind of like tap into 
So marketing is my passion, it is my drive, and I love helping not just businesses, but people as well. And now, what do you hope to accomplish with uh, Trend Cash? I hope within the next two years to have over four million viewers statewide, uh, maybe go international, create a network where it is not just affordable, but businesses can really take their products and services in every state, every location without ever having to leave their office, go online, or people waiting to find where they are. Are there any other companies out there that you know of that are doing the same thing as you are? Uh, to be honest with you, the concept already exists. There are plenty of companies who are uh, doing digital advertising, but my concept is a bit different because it is a gateway where a business can also advertise another business. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that. Um, this is the reason why I did it, is because I wanted to create something that is an alliance. For example, if you're a restaurant, right? You sell food, you do catering, uh, and there's, there's a clinic, right? And we put the screens in the clinic. They can work together for the first time ever by having a digital display where the doctors can cater from the restaurant and vice versa. Where the, where the people at the restaurant can also go get checked at the doctor. So I created something that complements businesses together, mm -hmm. and I've yet to see that. Okay. Um, why do you think print advertising is falling out of favor? Okay, so in the digital age, uh, print advertisement is great. I mean, it's, it's a great way to kind of like go out and, and tell people what you do, but the disadvantage is you can't update the information if it's, if it's outdated. Mm -hmm. uh, also, with print advertising, you can't really know who's grabbing it, who's seeing it, because you know, you're just passing, passing it along, you're spending money on, 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 on printing, but with digital advertising, you got a 65 inch digital display that's always on 24 seven, no holidays, and no one can actually rip, rip it or the information can be outdated because we can easily change that. Mm -hmm. Also, with print advertising, you need to mail it. So it needs a lot of manpower behind it. With digital advertising, we can simply update the information from New York to Florida to Boston to Connecticut without ever you know, having to pay extra money. So not only printing is expensive, but digital advertising is clean, neat, and affordable. Okay, now tell me a little bit about um, how to get started. Let's say I wanted to uh, do business with you. Right. How would that work? It's a simple process. The first thing we do is we try to understand what your product and services uh, is. Mm -hmm. We want to know what is your demographic. But it's not, it's, what I'm trying to understand, it's not a partnership that we enter into with your company. Mm -hmm. You would actually do advertisement for us. Correct. So, okay. it, it's more like a subscription, a membership. Okay. Because when you join the platform, you're buying the ad space. Mm -hmm. And the ad space, it's pretty much every location we have. Mm -hmm. So, the first thing... And the reason I'm asking is that you have a big screen and showing advertising for other companies Correct. within my company. Right. So I think that's where we need clar you know, clarification. clarification. Yes. Okay, so the, like I said, the screen is, and your, the demographics is important, right? right? Yeah. So if you're a restaurant, we can't bring another restaurant within your restaurant. So what we want to do is we want to find other companies that complement your business, that goes with your business. Mm -hmm. So maybe as a restaurant, you don't offer fruits, we'll find a business that sells fruit mm -hmm. that can be in your business. Uh, if you don't have cake, we could bring a bakery uh, advertisement into your business. Uh, you know, there are also companies who, who provide um, paychecks mm -hmm. to other companies, so we could find another business like that to advertise within yourself. Parties. If there's a special event happening, we can advertise that within your business. So we don't just advertise without knowing what we are doing. We want to understand your demographics, what the person is signing up for before we kind of tell you which location we would best benefit from. Okay, question for you now is, if I have a pharmacy, I'm a pharmacy owner, and I said, you know what, I, I definitely want to use you to 
to do some advertisement for me. Okay. Now you have this big screen television inside my pharmacy. Would you be advertising other pharmacies um, with that big screen TV? No, that would be a conflict of interest. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's funny you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, we signed up a big company, uh, uh, a Truvada. It's a drug company. Right. Um, it is a con it's a drug that is helping um, HIV. Correct. So basically, uh, people that are taking Truvada every day reduces the chance of catching HIV if they happen to be exposed to it. Mm -hmm. So our goal as advertisers is to go to every location and display the information to the general public so they are well aware and educated about the product, right? So if you're a pharmacy now, and you, you happen to have that screen in your in your entity, mm -hmm. it would be beneficial for you because not only we are promoting this beautiful drug that's helping their community, but also you can sell it. Well, as a pharmacy, I would be selling it already. <laughs> but we would let our patients know that, gee, this drug, Tuvada, if you take it, it'll prevent exactly. your partner, I'm a pharmacy, that's why I'm ah, <laughs> So it would prevent your your partner to um uh, uh you know to uh, to be affected by by the um, HIV infection. So, but my question is, um, Milan's pharmacy, would you pay advertisement for Sonia's pharmacy? So allow me to 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 uh, to kind of like clarify. Mm -hmm. Every for every location, the screen is personalized for that particular entity. Okay. So, you all, once you join our network, mm -hmm. you also have the other network. But what we don't do is advertise your pharmacy within another pharmacy because oh, it create a conflict of interest. I, I think our patient viewers would like to know that because yes. they don't appreciate, so appreciate we don't, competition. No, we don't promote bakeries okay. inside a bakery. Okay. But we do promote restaurants inside bakeries because food is different from pastry. Hey, it's a, it's a legitimate concern to have, you know, not to want my company to be advertising yes. for doing the advertisement for another company that, that is providing the same service so okay and i also forgot to mention um we do also take it very uh serious mm -hmm. about the information we display mm -hmm. we do uh verify the companies mm -hmm. and we also share weather news updates about what's happening the announcements um, we also work with politicians as well mm -hmm. to uh, deliver their message, what they are trying to convey to the general public. Um, so it's not just a screen. Like I said, I wanted to create something where that reflects back in the community. So uh, in variance with the advertising, we also have a, you know, a responsibility towards the general public in the community mm -hmm. to display jobs, weather, update news, and keep right. them informed. Right. Good. So tell us how we can uh, get your services. Share that information with us. Sure. I'd like to tell every business out there, if you are doing social media marketing, it's great. Because the millennials, it's a great way to reach and connect with people. However, there is a new platform that we have created that is in addition to complement your business where you can reach local foot traffic individuals that can connect with your business through our screens. All you have to do is give us a call. We'll walk you through it. It's very easy and affordable. And our phone number is 718-650-5570, and we'd love to promote your business. And you have heard from Franz Kutar, who is the CEO of Trendcatch Digital Advertisement. And his phone number again is 718-654-5570. 650. 654-55... No, 718-650-5570. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, we're well, moving on to Mr. David Thomas. Thank you. How are you? I'm well. And thank you for being here with us. Um, I I understand that you came here right after the earthquake. Yes. That's right. Um, and I must um. I must be thinking right there in my mind, I wasn't there how traumatic it was for my family because my brother was still there. It must have been so traumatic for you and your family. Can, can you tell us what that experience was like? Well, it was devastating at first experience such loss at an early age. It made me grow up at a faster rate than others. I viewed my goals quickly that I had to come to this country 
and do better to provide for my mother who was struggling with the loss of her father and her son, her mother, and multiple others, people in my family also died. Yeah. Wow. Um, so when did you, I understand that your mother decided that it was best for you and your sister mm -hmm. to come to the United States? Yes. And why was that decision made? Is it because there were, there were issues with the infrastructure, that, such as, you know, the um, schools in Haiti and... Well, my current school was also destroyed. Okay. The foundation of my home was had cracks, so we had to sleep outdoors in the mm -hmm. cars for up to three weeks until we came to the United States. Okay. Um, how was your house affected by the earthquake? Um, the foundation had cracks in it, and we couldn't sleep inside. Wow, so it was deemed unsafe to be in the house? Yeah. Okay. Um, it is fortunate that you actually have family here in the United States that could welcome you and help you out. Tell me, what, what was that experience like? Coming to the United States? Yes. Um, it was... It was at first, I always wanted to come to the United States knowing that this is the land of opportunities mm -hmm. and that if I came to this country, that if I worked hard, anything was attainable. And my mother always told me that. And she told me if I come to this country, I better have my head straight and I need to be focused on my goals no matter what. And that was what I was doing. Okay, great. And how do you think, um, Although the earthquake itself was a devastating, a very tragic event to happen in your life, mm -hmm. uh, do you think, you know, what, how they say um, something tragic can bring something great? How do you think it um, impacted you? Impacted me? Well, right now, like I'm currently one of the leaders in the of Alma, and I always tell people, like, there's no such thing that could bring you down to turn you away from your goals that you need to stay focused no matter what. And as young men in this community, especially young men of color, mm -hmm. we're always oppressed and always told you can't do certain things. Especially me, when I first came to this country, I was told, oh, you're an immigrant, this, that, and the third, you can't achieve certain things, and you can't let that limit you to the opportunities that's presented to you. And currently you are a, a senior in high school, yeah. and you go to Elmont Memorial High School. Yes. You also play varsity football, yeah. and you are co-captain of the team. Are you yes. still playing football? No, I'm not. Why not? Um, I was unfortunately hit by a car, oh, okay. and due to the injuries I received from the accident, I couldn't proceed playing football. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. Well, um, was that you know, disappointing to you? Well, absolutely, but uh, like I turned my focus on other things. I worked more in different clubs, got more involved into the community and honor societies and and did more community service and uh, used my time in smart ways. So tell me a little bit about El Men of Elmont. Oh, Men of Elmont. Mm -hmm. um, like leaders and advisors, we cultivate and grow young men to be proper and functioning people in the community and we teach them about their culture and their background because you can't know where you're going if you don't know your past. And unfortunately, in our history books, we're not learn our history in a proper way, but we'll learn about the negative aspects such as slavery and the civil rights movement, where we don't learn of the great things and the great um, learners and teachers and masters throughout the history, such as the Moors and all the great things that happened in Africa before um, they were taken over. So, you know, having come here to the United States at an early age and you've met a lot of young men your age and uh, they're not Haitian yeah. or maybe they have Haitian parents but they don't know much about the culture. Are you able to share the Haitian culture with them? And or are you one of those Haitians, like, forget Haiti and you don't want to have anything to do? I, I always, like, like, that's the first thing I tell people that I'm Haitian, and then everybody's like, yeah. And then, like, some people don't even take pride in them. I'd be like, you need to tell them that you're Haitian. You're one of the first free black republics in the world. Like, our history is profound, and you need to be proud of that. And what we stand for is so much greater than what you know. Exactly. We don't get to choose where we come from. However, we can make the best of it and be proud of it. Um, so, now, you're, you're a... 
a high school, well, future high school graduate, and you're thinking of going to either St. John's University or the University of Connecticut. Yeah. Have you chosen? Uh, yes, I actually committed to St. John's University, and I'll be majoring in anthropology and minoring in psychology, and on the pre-law track, focused on corporate law. Corporate law. Okay. At one time, I wanted to be a, uh, a lawyer myself, but uh, yeah, I decided otherwise. Um, but yeah, someday maybe I will go back and, and you know, take that degree. Um, so, what else are you doing right now with, um, um, with, with your time? With my time? Mm -hmm. Right now, well, I'm working on the Mel Summit, which is um, <laughs> May 31st at Alma Memorial High School. What is that? Um, it's the Mel Summit. We bring in speakers, panelists who come from great fields who are successful young black men in the community, and they come back and speak to the kids and choose the next year is for the next year to lead the, the group of kids. Do you have any role models? Me personally, um, I my mom, absolutely. My mom is my greatest role model. Wow. She's a warrior herself, and uh -huh. she always works hard. Like, my mom is like the toughest woman that I know, and then, like, always working. Haitian women tend to be very tough. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, um, have you gone back to Haiti? Well, recently? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not recently, because uh -huh. uh, I had to do, I took a couple classes at NYU this summer, uh -huh. so I couldn't go back to Haiti, but usually I go back every single summer. Every single summer, yeah. okay. Um, so do you, do you wish to go back in the future to possibly do any work in, in Haiti, yeah. perhaps to help or to yeah. educate? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Like, my sister herself, she said, she's she currently about to graduate from NYU. Um, she had, like, a plan, a non-profit, um, like health care system mm -hmm. that she wants to implement in Haiti. And now she told me, like, once I get my law degrees and certain things like that, I should come and help her build that non in Haiti. Very good. So proud of you. Continued success with you. And good luck with um, St. John's University. It's a great school. You've chosen a great school. So I didn't graduate from St. John's, but uh, it's a great school. Um, so. Uh, I'm very proud of you because you're a young man and you know you you suffered a a, a tragic a tragic uh, event in your life at a young age but you ended up making the best out of it and we're, we in the Haitian community we're very proud of you and continue to do great things in your community alright alright now we'll move on to the great savvy French Thank you for being here, Kiel, with us. And um, um, I, I want to say that we didn't get to speak before um, we started the show, so I'm going to have you do most of the talking. Um, but I understand that you work in media and uh, you are a radio personality. Uh, well, I'm in the process right now of going to have a televised talk show okay. on Union 9 television. I'm hoping to debut in June. Okay. So right now we're in the process of lining, being that I'm new to live television, we're going to pre-record my first show. Okay. So right now we're in the process of lining up our guests and our production dates and hoping to de debut in June. Well, we congratulate you on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your background. Okay, I'm Haitian American. I'm the youngest of five, and I'm the only one that was born here. And the reason I mention that is because it's funny. I grew up in Cambridge Heights, which is self proclaimed Little Haiti. Mm -hmm. So it's not until, and I went to Sacred Heart in Cambridge Heights, which is, again, Little Haiti. So it's not until I graduated from Sacred Heart that I realized what Haitian American is, because I just always thought of myself as Haitian prior to meeting people of different backgrounds and understanding that it's a balance, you know, being able to balance being Haitian mm -hmm. and then going out into the world and being viewed as American, as black, as a woman, so many different categories. So. Um, that was something that I had to learn how to navigate. Um, then I grew up in Cape Cod. I said at one point I lived in Elmont. 
which uh, was very interesting because it shows you the similarities, but yet the differences of two communities that literally are right next to each other. You know, I grew up walking into Almont to go to Carvel and Baskin Robbins, and so I think that's something that framed me. Um, again, as the youngest of five, I taught so many people to speak English. My mother learned English by watching Channel 13 with me. My siblings, I spent some time in Haiti, then we all came back together, and then we all learned English together, even though I was born here. Um, you know, as you said, I'm just trying to familiarize with who I am as to being French. Then growing up, being Haitian, you know, first generation Haitian, advocacy, politics is something that you hear all of the time, especially in my home. So it taught me early on um, the importance of being involved because I come from that gen my parents uh, come from that generation where politics is not a nice word. Mm -hmm. My mother, when I speak of politics, she always lowers her voice and says, you know, let's be clear for a moment. I told you, I guess got that wrong. I told you, we saw people by the top for me. And it's like, what is America? Like, stop it. We're in America. Enjoy America. But, you know, I find that so many people in her generation are traumatized by the word politics. So for me, again, leaving my little safe little lady, I learned the, the privilege of being an American. The privilege of understanding the Constitution, freedom of speech, knowing your rights, advocating. You know, that's something I think that um, many immigrants, mm -hmm. they have to learn that being an American is not just going to work, paying taxes, and having the right to buy property. Being an American is participating, using your voice, knowing your rights, uh, supporting and promoting those that are willing to protect your rights. You know, I think it's very important. Many people who are born in America, they were taught to vote, 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 vote. Even if you have no idea who your representative is, you have to vote. But I think as immigrants, we have so much to lose and we need to gain so much that we have to go the extra step of voting, becoming naturalized, and being able to form relationships with those that will represent you and me. Because of immigrants, we have such needs. All right, and how do you think, as a community, we can do better educating people and, yeah, on the importance of voting and basically doing some research to find out who you're voting for? Because at this point, I don't think it's about being a Democrat or a Republican. Absolutely. I think it's you know voting for the right person who's going to enact laws but are not going to be in contradiction or conflict with your your um, religious beliefs. You know, it's not, oh, I'm a Democrat, therefore I need to vote for so, so and so. And then once they're elected, you find out you're not happy with the laws that they're enacted. Mm -hmm. So how, how do we do better with that? Um, sacrifice your time. I think that, again, we become, we take certain things for granted because we think in the civil rights movement was such a long time ago. I got on the plane and I came here such a long time ago. And we assume that we're comfortable. But you have to sacrifice your time. You have to sacrifice your time in researching candidates. You have to sacrifice your time in going to a PTA meeting, going to a community meeting. Reading an article, you know, you get those things in the mail from your politicians. Take a moment out and read it. It's sacrificing your time. If you're going to sacrifice an hour of your time and then having the conversation. Again, you know, growing up in Canberra Heights, Lyndon Le Boulevard is a strip where everyone is discussing politics, Haitian politics. Taking time out and say, let's talk about Haiti for a moment. Let's speak about American politics, New York politics. So I think it's just sacrificing time. If you're willing to sacrifice your time, you'll be more educated. And then having the conversation. If I have knowledge, share it with her. 
Remind her of an election today. Remind her of a PTA meeting. Remind her to make a phone call about the pot bowl. Mm-hmm. Time, just sacrificing time. Right. So without making time to seek the information, we're not going to do the right things. We're not going to be able to make the right decision. So we need to make the time to do the research, find out about our politi- politicians, and to find out what you know the, the, the different laws that they're working on, what their interests are, so that they're not in conflict with your beliefs. So, um, why what, what are you doing in the community right now? Well, at this point, um, I'm a, my well, I pay the bills. I say by being a social. Uh, a caseworker. Mm-hmm. So I pay the bills by being a caseworker. So I, my background originally is I used to be a real estate paralegal in the bank side, the bank attorney side. Mm-hmm. And then when the market changed, it was mostly foreclosures and investors. And I wasn't happy with that mm-hmm. as my background. I wanted to empower people. So I didn't feel good, you know, Working on foreclosure deals, coming people helping to lose their home. Right. So I'm a community advocate and I'm a political organizer. So people told me, why not get paid for what you're doing for free anyway? So I say that to say, what I'm working on is what I work on every day: uh, sharing information, organizing people, encouraging them to vote. Uh, if someone to go back to our earlier guests, what they were saying, I believe another thing is is educating blacks in the power of networking. I think that's something else that as immigrants we have to understand. You know, coming from Haiti, your name can open doors for you. You don't have to even speak. Your last name will do the work for you. In a way, in America, you're one of many. Network. Network, network, network. So that's what I work on every day is empowering people. That's what I work on currently. If there's an election going on and I support that candidate, encouraging others to find out what they're about and to vote for them. Now, tell me the difference. Is there a difference actually between a caseworker and a social worker? Yes, there is. Okay. What is that? A social worker is a person that went to school, because I, that's an interesting question that you asked. Mm-hmm. A social worker is a person that has a master's in social work. Mm-hmm. So you studied four years, you can have studied anything undergrad, your bachelor's degree can be uh, anything. But then you go on to grad school and you further your education and then you become a, you get a degree of social worker. Okay. You don't necessarily have to go on and get your license, but you then should go on and become a licensed social worker. And then from there, there are other credentials that you can acquire. Uh, I'm at a cusp of considering going to get my master's in social work or maybe going to law school. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important if a person wants to pursue social work long term, get your degree. Get your degree. What about masters? Okay. What about the caseworker? What caseworker? We work very similarly. Okay. But the thing is, when you're a caseworker, you have to work under a social worker. Okay. It's very similar to a nurse and a doctor. Mm -hmm. A a nurse, you have to have your own credentials, but you have to work under a doctor. So a caseworker, we do things that are very similar, but a social worker has to sign off. On what you do. Okay, great. Uh, I, because I, I was asking that question myself. Uh, I was having a conversation not too long ago because we were having an issue, and I was talking to a caseworker, and I made the mistake of saying the social worker, and they were like, "No, I'm not a social worker." So I thank you for the. Uh, you can work in social work, and right. but I work but in the general. Yes. Right, right. Uh, so tell us about um, how how you decided to go into uh, social um, no, radio. I mean, the radio. Yes, it's interesting. Um, on social media, I'm very active because through campaigning and through politics and community organizing, I learned the importance of social media. 
To many people, the first thing they do is go on the telephone. We date through social media. We find restaurants through social media. We do everything through social media. So from politics and campaigning, I became pretty active in social media. So sometimes, uh, one of my posts will lead to days long debates. So someone said to me off the air, said you should have your own talk show. Uh -huh. So I made a post and I was like, ha ha ha, oh, well, people think I should have my own talk show. So in the, you know, they said it goes down the DM, direct message. In my direct message, the uh, owner of a radio station said, would you really consider having your own talk show? I'm like, well, would you really consider giving me my own talk show? So I went in, I met with him in management, and as I say, the rest is history. And remind us again when we're first starting. Uh, in June, right now we're in the process of promoting it, but it's going to be on Union mm -hmm. and um, on all social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, what's missing? Twitter, mm -hmm. and it's all talk, of, no, talk about it, underscore SF. Okay. So you'll find that all platform. So tell us, um, tell our viewers how we can get in touch with you. Uh, you can get in touch with me on social media, talk about it, underscore SF. You can email me at talkaboutitmedia at gmail.com. And also you can reach me at 347 8. Bear with me, guys. I never call myself. 347-871-6926. And um, something that is very important to me in terms of my show, I my topics are primarily politics, current current events, know your rights, mental health, uh, self awareness. Mm -hmm. So I find it that it's a privilege. I think you know, as a show you can understand. I find I feel that having my platform is a privilege, and I open it to others. So um, if anyone has a topic that they would like to present, any attorneys, social workers. Um, life coach, anyone who has a story they would like to share, please feel free. Most of my shows are panel discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, so if anyone has a topic they would like to present or something they would like to discuss, my platform is our platform. Feel free. I do advertise, but to be quite honest, the majority, I don't really have guests on to advertise. Mm -hmm. Most of my shows are based upon information social information. So if anyone would like to be a guest on Talk About It Needs to Be French, feel free to reach out. If you would like to advertise, feel free, but our platform is what I say. You know, believe me, this is a ministry. And, you know, if you do have a passion to, you know, share the knowledge that you have with your community and the rest of the world, you know, it is a gift from God, and um, Thank you. we, you know, we appreciate the work that you're doing. So, um, last but not least, yes, we have the great Jeannie Lewis. Um, she's the youngest, actually, out of the entire group, but she's um, just starting high school. And since we're talking about media, we wanted her to be part of it because um, she's actually uh, studying the ninth grade and she has a passion for the performing arts. Uh, she likes to sing, dance, and actually uh, she was um, in a play. Yeah. Can you tell us about the play? Okay, so um, when I was in eighth grade, like in year four, um, we were told that the year, like, this year we'll be doing like musicals. We'll be able to do like we'll be able to do an acapella group. We would be, we would be able to be in like choir things like that. And the minute I heard musical, I was like, oh my gosh, a musical! So I joined this year, and the only thing I could really think about was the musical. So um, the musical that we did was called the Jersey Chaperone, and it was one of the best experiences. Um, the practices were grueling. It was like at least three times a week for a couple of hours, especially during the last week. It was all week for maybe about six, seven hours, but it felt way shorter because that's something I really enjoy doing. So. You seem to be uh, a, a career-minded young woman. 
and you're already thinking about the future, what you would like to do. Yeah. Um, so what do you see yourself um, doing after high school? Um, I actually have a whole story around this. I've planned this out for a while. Okay. Um, once I graduate high school, I plan to advance in um, getting my PhD, um, going into being a neurosurgeon, things like that. Um, after being a neurosurgeon, I plan to go to AMDA to get my BFA, which is the Bachelor's Degree of Fine Arts. What is AMDA? AMDA is a music school in um, the... Is that an acronym? Yeah. Okay. It's the American Music Department of... I forgot the rest. Wait. Yeah. The American the Music Department of, you know, things for, like, musicals, becoming, like, a singer, things like that. It's mostly, like, ranging in the arts. So I was planning on doing that. And then after AMGA, I was also planning on doing something with maybe videography, photography, something like that. Because I also really enjoy, like, I enjoy things like that. I like, immerse myself in, like, taking photos. I have multiple, like, professional cameras at home just for photos. So that's something I also enjoy doing. I see you like the uh, artistic stuff. Yeah. But you also want to be a neurosurgeon. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, but why? Well, it's something I've been saying since I was a child. Like, I remember my mom was always telling me that like, she vividly remembers me dressing up as a doctor for Halloween. I would pretend to take her pulse. I would be checking her vitals, seeing like how she's doing. Especially if she was like, oh, I don't feel so well. I'm like, okay, mom, lay back. I'll check you, we'll see if everything's fine. You know, I was kind of the young doctor in the house. Um, <laughs> um, and I've just always been fascinated with things of like, I don't know, like human anatomy, like things like that. Like I've just been interested in becoming a doctor. I don't really know where it came from, but it's just been like a thing of mine. Do you find yourself watching a lot of shows based on medical? Yeah. yeah. Well, I figured that yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this is our show for you today, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our guests. Until next time, I'm Dr. Milan Peluzzi. Au chaud, détendu, l'esprit qui est rigolant sous le ciel d'Haïti. Oui, je l'avoue, j'en suis fier, j'en suis folle, Dieu merci, et je chante. Oui, parmi tout pays que me connaît sur la terre, seul Haïti original y sans pareil. Paradis, ce père pays de rêve, y a un ciel de paix côté la jambe, pas de bonheur côté tout le monde, c'est mon tout le monde. Levé grand matin, gardé tout le monde, comme y a vivre, Zami, comme on y est, et tout le monde est la caille. A nous pas contre qui grand bonheur gagne Haïti. Notre présent bouillotti et tout frère Bayo, nous n'attaquons pas de gager mon yacht, n'a pas joué guitare pour appeler tambour, fait que content en bas pied bois sans que sauter. Chaque jour, quand il poule, n'a dit bon Dieu, nos grands merci, nous gagnons trésor dans la paix, paradis. Dans vos pays qui soient disant civilisés, crime pour chaque jour, c'est pas sans peine, y'a contrôlé. Ambition, l'argent fait que tout le monde perdit bon vie et sauvage. Vive sans pitié, que y'a bien du tant pis pour Haïti, chérie, gardez faux faits dans le cinéma. Gade go kai go foli Ou se l'idéal maman Hey ya